win the war in your mind. Um, we like to start with something funny, and something my wife uh, likes to share with me is videos of cats. I don't know why, but we are entertained by cats. Anybody else entertained by cats? Four of you, excellent. All right, so what, what, what I saw here was, I think, sums up what some of us are feeling in a, like when your body actually attacks your, your, yourself. You're, you're just feel like you're on the edge of craziness. It looks like this in the cat realm. Here we go. <laughs> this cat is just taking care of business, and all of a sudden... <laughs> Are you feeling this? Can we watch it just one more time, real quick, please? Cause... No? No? Come on. Entertain me. It's on, okay, thank you. <laughs> Life is rolling along and, and you find yourself punishing yourself and you can't stop. And you're just punching yourself in the face. That's what some of us are feeling, okay? So um, we'll have a little more uh, diagnostic of what's happening spiritually in just a moment. Before we get there, grab your Bible. I want us to remind ourselves. If you're new with us today, this is what we do every week. Remind ourselves who we are according to this, according to God. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. Lord, I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same in Jesus' name. Lord, help us to not be the same. Teach us today. Train us today. Help us to see some of the things that we bought into that you want to save us from and be renewed in our minds. In Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. All right. This is, this is going to be great. I like where we're heading here. Um, but before we get there, um, we're going to do the bumper video. This, uh, this is by Craig Rochelle, this, this whole series. We've taken it and, and amended it for our body, okay? So as we do this, um, it's going to start with this video, and then we're going to walk into it from there. So I want us to prayerfully take everything in, not for somebody that's in your pew, not for somebody next to you, but Lord, how do you want to work your will in me? How do you want to change my mind? How do you want to shape my thinking? Amen? Amen. Here we go. Trusting God versus, I want control. Anybody else want control? <laughs> I really want to control the responses that happen in my house. Anybody else? Yep. 
We don't have it. I want to stay in the joy movement versus the concern movement. Amen. Joy versus, oh, I'm really concerned. I'm actually maybe anxious. So what we're going to discover together is that this battlefield in the mind is as old as all of time. Okay? It's not new to you. It, all of us face it. And what we do with it is really a decision. This starts today. It starts today. And it starts with me. Let's look at um, maybe the poster child for the war going on in his mind. Might be a guy named Saul who was busy persecuting Christians, busy going to kill them if necessary. This new church that's rising up, it was his godly duty to go put this fire out. And as he's going to Damascus to go put a fire out and go suppress Christians, censor them, remove their voice. As he was doing that, this gives us hope for 2022, right? It gives us hope. Jesus, in the middle of his little journey to go extinguish Christians, Jesus meets him on the road to Damascus, knocks him off his camel, and says, Hey! Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Remember that story? In that moment, Saul has a, a change of mind, a change of heart, actually loses his vision for some period of time, and then is restored. And then God is... Now, once that happened to Saul whose name is changed to Paul, who ends up writing like a lot of the New Testament, we get to see his misunderstandings, his fears and phobias, his battlefield of the mind kind of unravel in front of us. In fact, in Romans chapter 7, verse 18, Paul says, the things I want to do, I don't do. The things I want to do, I don't do. And the things I don't want to do, those are the things I do. But the things I don't want to do, I end up doing the things I want to do, I can't seem to do. Is he going crazy? Is he losing his mind? It's the battle that rages within him. Sounds like my brother Randy, right? Is he going crazy? Randy would say, it sounds like my brother Rob. Yeah. <laughs> Is he going crazy? <laughs> That's probably more like it. So we're going to watch this unfolding of, of faith happen in the mind and the heart of this guy named Paul as we progress through this six-week series. Okay, so today we're going to start. There's hope. I'm going to give you hope. There's, there's hope for this battle that's waging in your head. There's true hope. So, as we look at the words of Paul, for though we live, for though we live, that didn't pass the verse today. All right, thank you. 2 Corinthians 10 3. This is written in your bulletin as well. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. All of us live in the world, right? And if we're not careful, we can start waging war with our words, with our, with our sharp tongue, with our intellect. We can start waging war. We can wage it with fools, right? And with fools, when you start waging war with them, those who look on to that conversation, they won't know the difference. They won't know the difference between the fool and the foolish one arguing with the fool. So it, this is this is a what is what is proper to take up. What is what we need to let go of. So in, in your bulletins you have this title of kind of top down. Here it is. Most of life's battles are won or lost in your mind. Fill that in. Mind. Most of life's battles are won or lost before you ever get onto the field. I'm wearing a bell shirt. They could lose the battle before 425 today, right here, before they even get on the field. If they go out there and they say, we're ineffective, we're terrible, we're awful at what we do, we're, we're going to lose today, we're bad. Do you see what I mean? Well, don't even take the field then. 
We can lose the battle before you ever get there. So back to the scripture. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we, we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, the weapons that we have have divine power to de demolish strongholds. So let's look, look at the word divine power. Power in the Greek is dunamis. Dunamis means explosive, miraculous power of God. Do you, I want some dunamis. Do you know what dunamis is also the root word of? Dynamite! I don't know who said that back in the 70s. It's dynamite! I can picture it. Well, what TV program is that? I have no idea what any of you said, but I just want to see it. Okay. Dynamite! There's... Now, if we're not careful, and, and we just say, I like dynamite, excuse me. My, my brother Rick is a pyrotechnic at heart. <laughs> Before he got it, like if he wasn't going to go into medicine, he would have just gone into explosives and blowing stuff up. He still uh, loves to blow stuff up in the backyard to this day. I mean, he shoots something and it goes boom. Um, but if we're not careful, if we don't have the right target, you're going to blow up things you didn't mean to, amen? You're going to blow up a relationship. No, 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 that's not what we meant to do. We're going we're gonna to blow up something that we didn't intend to. No, dynamite, the power of God is to demolish what? Strongholds. What are strongholds? you got to ask yourself, what is the stronghold? The Greek word is ochurama. I have no idea how close that was to actual Greek. All right. O-C-H-U-R-O-M-A. Ochurama. Ochurama. I don't know. It's a military stronghold, and it literally is like a fortress. And I don't know if you got a picture for me of a 20-foot... It wasn't a good one. All right, picture a 20-foot thick wall. So a 20-foot thick wall would be about from the wall to about me, give or take a few feet, right? That's a thick wall. What would that be for? That would be to, to hide the important people of the city in that, in that fortress place, in that stronghold, or as likely it would be to hide the people that have already been captured so that the enemy can't come in and get their people back. It's a stronghold. It's a 20 foot thick wall. Do you know that the devil, your spiritual enemy, seeks to put a 20 foot barrier between you and God? <clears throat> seeks to make a, a, a stronghold in your life of what? S-I-N, sin. Wants to put a stronghold in your life of poor thinking, of negative thinking, of wrong thoughts, of lacking thoughts. So when you believe that something's untrue, the enemy takes you away from God's healing and distracts you and I from the calling God put on our lives. So it's very important today to understand, hey, what is the devil doing? What is he up to in my life when he told me that thought? It wants me to go that direction. Am I, is my life better? Or is he trying to shape and conform the clay of my mind to be like the serpent, to think like the devil, to do his bidding by the power of what God gave me to be his? So let me ask it this way. One lie at a time. I become a prisoner of deception when I can say these kind of things. Am I saying this? Ask it of yourself. I can't trust anyone. You'll never succeed. You'll always be broke. You'll never have a good marriage. God doesn't hear your prayers. Or God doesn't care about you. Do you feel something slither across the back of your neck when you when you hear those things said? You should. But some of these things fall out of our very lips. I stared at myself intensely in the mirror last night. Anybody else do that? Does that just make me weird? Thank you. One. Two. Okay, great. I stare tensely. Why? I'm, 
I had this little conversation with Ed last night at the pool table while he was doing something with his fishing. I don't know how it came up, but we were talking about, you know, when they block out the identity of a person, they put a, just a black triangle across their eyes. You can see the rest of them, but what are they blocking out? And I was talking to Ed, it's really, the eyes are the window of the soul. There is something communicating. This is what separates us from the animal kingdom. Conscious versus unconscious. And if you want to go back to evolutionary junk, <laughs> where did we evolve a conscience? We didn't. God gave us one. And he made us different from the animals. Because he gave us conscience. So as we think about, man, what's going on in here? There's a picture as I look into the mirror of, of looking into my very soul and saying, God, am I good with you? And it's a joyful moment when you are good with God. It's a somber moment when you look intently into your own eyes and say, God, I want to be right with you. Is this Tear down the strongholds in my mind. I don't want to be saying, oh, I'm not going to make a difference. I'm not going to amount to anything. Because this battle in my mind, let's, let's arm up with the scripture. That we may demolish arguments and every pretension, which is a claim, that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. With God's help, we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. You know, I kind of see this as spin the table on the enemy. The stronghold is when the enemy gets a stronghold in our life of negativity, of, of wrong thinking. But if we flip that thing around, the stronghold can be that place where I protect what the sanctity of what God gave me, joy. It's available to me if I choose it. It's available, peace. It's available if I choose him and let him in, and guard him with a 20-foot wall. Satan, you cannot get in here because there's a 20-foot hedge around the salvation, the armor that God has placed around me, and I, I, I protect it with my very words. I protect it with your very life. Would we do that instead of letting the thoughts come in and then drive our lives with negativity? Oh, that person in my life they don't respect me. It's easy to get caught up in something like that. And then, and then we act out of a stronghold the enemy's placed in us. Not out of the confidence that Jesus... You heard my intro. If I come up here and I say, God, I'm... I understand we have frailties and we have insecurities. But bring those into the strong power of the anointing of God. Because most of life's battles are won and lost here before we ever get onto the field of life. And, and the second thing I want us to see is our lives are always moving in, in the direction of our strongest thoughts. That's in your bulletin. Our lives are always moving in the direction of what is my strongest thought. What is that thing that I think about so frequently and often? What do I wake up in the middle of the night going, Ugh. Both science and scripture agree that some eating disorders, some addictions, some forms of anxiety, some toxic thinking, what? Are they're a result of what we're chewing on in here. They're a result of what we are thinking on. A result of what we're pursuing with our minds. What are we putting our minds on? Proverbs 23, 7. For as he thinks, a man thinks, in his heart, so is he. It begs the question, what am I thinking about? What are you thinking about? Where do my thoughts go when there's a lull in the conversation? When I enter the room of my friends from church, where do my thoughts go? 
Well, I bet you nobody's going to talk to me today. So if you come in with that statement, what are you going to do? You're probably going to go sit in a corner somewhere, not talk to anybody, and test your theory if anybody's going to talk to you today. Meanwhile, somebody might look at you and be like, they're having a private time with Jesus. I don't want to interrupt that. <laughs> and so you go by, you weren't dismissing them. You were just honoring the space they put between them and you. Do you see how preconceived walk into a room and already put yourself out of the game by thoughts that aren't honoring God? How about going into the room of friends from church? We become the hands and feet and the voice of God instead. And say, God, help me before I enter this room to make a difference in somebody's life. Lord, I pray that you give me an encouraging word for my friends. I pray that you would help me to see the best in those who are around me. I pray that you would help me to be a joy to their life and bring them a rest. Doesn't that change everything? But that started right here. Before you enter the room. After you enter the room, it's too late. You're in the room. Now you can change in the room. Praise God. Amen? And if you're watching at home, this is all about you too. We get the chance to be the thermostat and, and set the comfort temperature for somebody. Make somebody feel comfortable. Amen? It's that easy. And yet it's not. Because the enemy's trying to defeat us in the battlefield of my mind. Sometimes we tend to think, I can't do something, so then I what? I won't do it. I don't have what it takes. And I won't do it. If you think, by the grace of God, you and me are a majority. Do you think you're going to get it done? Amen. I believe what we're thinking about, how we're dealing in our thought life, is going to change everything. It's time for a thought audit as we head forward here. This is... This is Oh, got a quick thing? Go ahead. Yeah. So, sorry, there's another quick fill in there, and I didn't want to miss it. It's such a great sentence. The life we have, and this is what Pierre's talking about, the life we have, what we live, the way we move through our day, and the way you move through your day, is a complete reflections, a reflection of the thoughts mm. that you think. Mm. Mm. And so how you're moving through your interactions with other people, how you're moving through that when you walk in the room. And like he said, it's, so this is a great sentence to think about. How am I thinking right now? I don't like the way this day is going. How are you thinking? Stinking. 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 <laughs> Stinking. Good job. Wait around. You know, so that's, that's just one of the things, and I think that's such a great concept to just let our minds just keep that in front of you, to say, how am I thinking right now? I'm having a great day. How am I thinking? How did that differ? Oh, I see how I've made that adjustment from yesterday. So the direct relationship of how you are living your day and whether you're having a happy day or a sad day is a reflection of the thoughts that you're thinking and the ones you're allowing to spin in your mind. Here. Now. Now you can get to your... Now we can get to the thought audit because that is powerful. Do you know that um, an argument that could come to pass between your spouse and yourself or some child in your in your home or whatever at work, in the, in the office at work, whatever it might be, an argument that could happen could be snuffed out before it gets a chance to even begin. Amen? Yes. By the power of where you are in your thoughts. Often that has a lot to do with your devotion time that morning. Or your lack of it. Amen? Yeah. It's absolutely connected. Okay, let's do this audit. Uh, it's in your bulletin. Here we go on the... Uh, it's, not, it's tax season. Here we go. Audit. <laughs> okay, uh, it's an audit of your mind. All right? We're going to try to keep this to under an hour. Here. No, I'm just kidding. It's only a few minutes. Here we go. Audit. We're, the first one is worried, that, that starts at one, that, that'd be bad if we're worried, that's, that's a one count, or am I ten, peaceful, all right? So let me give you some parameters, here we go. Uh, are you typically worried? You live life in a panic? Are you full of anxiety and fear? No, stop auditing my life, it's not about me, okay? So you know me, and you're like, 
Hey, you might exhibit some of those. My children in the back. It's not pointing. Okay, anyway, back to... Listen, it's tough. I'm telling you, this is for me as much as it's for anybody on the planet. I need this. And I want to get this more right. And, and I think we have the tools today to make some adjustments in here. Am I typically worried? Am I, am I panicked? Am I, am, am I in fear? I, te- I tend to lean that way. I don't know about you. Would you say that your thoughts are typically peace? Peace is to find yourself casting your cares on God. Life isn't perfect. You're still having some things that maybe you're worried about the kids. Maybe you're worried about health. Maybe you're worried about the economy. Maybe you, you, know, you tend to let your mind go towards the fear element. Peace would be that opposite thing that says, hey, there's still stuff to worry about, but God is bigger. I trust you. I'm putting that in your shoulders. Thank you, Jesus. I'm, I'm finding peace that passes understanding of where I'm at. So, quickly, give yourself a circle of number. Where am I at? Just, I know it sometimes varies by the situation. Amen, I understand. But in a general sense, most of the time, maybe do an out-of-body experience. Maybe give it to your neighbor. Be like, hey, read me on this. What do you think? That would be, that would be the most telling probably part. How do you perceive me? Um, but maybe you need to ask your neighbor. I'm going to give you a couple seconds to answer this. Now, thoughtfully, just say, Lord, where am I at? Where am I at? Lord, do I tend to worry? Am I, am I in the fear bracket here? Am I living out of anxiety and I'm brought up about the world or end of the world or whatever it might be? Politics, Omicron, whatever it might be. Or am I in peace? Do I, do I tend to live out of a trust in you? Okay, wasn't that fun? Second one, here we go. Second one. I'm not, I'm not giving you answers on this. I'm not, not trying to improve anything. I'm just trying to, hey, you are here. I want to get to that part, part in our lives. So this, the second thing is negative or positive? Negative would be the one. Positive is the ten. All right, let me give you a breakdown. Negative. Negative, you wake up and you find yourself critical of everybody. Yeah. Again, you're, whoever's next to you can probably help you. Um, do you assume the worst instead of believing the best in people? And some of this might be handed down how you were raised. Maybe you were raised to nitpick. At some point, we've got to own who I am and what I do. Not how my parents raised me, but God, be responsible with my words, my thoughts, my life. Do you look at your day and say, oh my goodness, I don't think I'm going to make it? <laughs> or are you that positive person that says, hey, that wasn't planned, but God, I know you're working all things together for the good of those who love you. So I'm going to trust you in the outcome. I know I'm a little tired today, but I changed you with a smile. It's great. <laughs> positive is the uh, things... We're difficult, but I, I thanked God through the things that happened and knew that he had a purpose and a plan and that he was still with me all the way. Now, rate yourself. Here we go. Negative. Positive. Again, it's a general thing. You might do well in a certain scenario, but there's other scenarios you're know, like, hey, I'm terrible. So they got to... They gotta, what do you call that? That's a ratio. You gotta bring that into the mix and give yourself a fair assessment. <laughs> I wanna ask you to like raise your hand if you're negative, but that's probably not gonna go well in the room. So we're not gonna do that. Don't do it at home either. Okay, here we go. <laughs> the third one. Am I this is this is telling. Am I worldly? That's that's on the one end. Or am I eternal? Let me give some more explanation of this. Worldly. Do my thoughts drift toward that which lasts forever, eternal, or towards that which could end any moment, which is worldly? So worldly would be, hey, I'm concerned about what I have, what I wear, how I look, how I'm perceived. Will they like my post? How many followers do I have? And what does everybody think of me? 
you know, there's that kind of worldly effect, and hope you understand. Am I living a worldly kind of mindset? Or am I thinking more eternal? Eternal thinks more about how can I use my gifts for God? How can I use my gifts and things that God has gifted me with and blessed me with to impact people's lives eternally? I want to take this past stuff to words. Is the expression on my face giving somebody the, the feeling that Jesus would give them? You are loved. You're important. Do, that, do I time out in my conversation to let you speak? That's honor. I'm letting you know you're important. Eternally, what we're going to talk, how, what I do, what I say, you can't kind of divorce any of those from all of that. Am I looking at this? Or am I focused more on this? Be, be fair. Where am I? Worldly or eternally thoughtful? Give me a second to answer that. That is, might take a little more time. Got it? Because what we think about truly matters more than we can imagine. So no matter what you do, what you have, what you know, where you live, what you buy, where you travel, if you, if you cannot have a positive attitude, you will not have a positive life. If you do not have a positive approach, you will not live a positive life. You will have a negative mind. I think many of us struggle more than anybody in the room knows in our private thoughts. The battlefield that's happening in here. I truly believe that. I heard a terrible stat yesterday. Let me see if I can remember it. In the third quarter of this year alone, more active military have committed suicide than anybody killed in the military by COVID. You think we don't have a problem? We do. And more and more you're going to hear about that in 2022 because we're putting people to the test with a pandemic. I won't get into the politics of it. But we're being tested right now in our resolve. And if you're going to do this without Jesus, good luck. I wish you well. I'm telling you, you want peace, you want power, you want joy? What's the verse? 2 Timothy 1 7. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. A sound mind. God, give that to our military. Those who are on, on, on the fringe of killing themselves. Lord, help them to understand they are fearfully and wonderfully made and loved by you. And as we close this morning, Identity, identify the biggest stronghold that is holding you back. That's written in your, in your bulletin. What is the strongest thing? What's this biggest stronghold the enemy is trying to place a lie within me? Maybe it's I'm not good enough, or, or my past is too bad for God to use me, or I'm, I'm always going to battle with my weight, or I'm never going to be good with money, or I, I can never be close to God because I always blow it. Or everyone is out to get me. How, wherever you find yourself identifying negative thoughts, do you know that those thoughts are literally causing a chemical change in your brain that is harming you neurochemically? It's a physiological change. But when you think positive thoughts, 
think God's thoughts, God gives us a rewarding hit of dopamine. That's actually where the word dope came from. Bless dope. Bless dopamine. God blessed us with this thing that can be released and is legal. It's awesome. In your brain, that, that he can hit you with it. It can happen when 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 my mom, my wife sends me a you know a little kissy face and and the I love you, I can't wait for you to be home tonight. Dopamine. Dumped right into the zone. Amen. It happens when, hey, you might you might have somebody you honor and respect and man, you can't believe they they actually said something on your post that was positive and powerful and it impacted your life. Dopamine, release. It happens when you probably hugged somebody this morning on the way in and felt the embrace of somebody who received you. Dopamine. It's a beautiful thing that literally uh, God gave to us as a blessing, for, as a reward for us, amen, in essence. So whatever we have been thinking becomes our default thought. Whether that be good, and that's what we're aiming for, amen, change our thoughts, or the, the negative stronghold. If we continue, um, I like how uh, Pastor Craig talked about this, and he kind of got my attention. This, this really arrested me. He talked about, like, if I walk out of my front door at my house and just for a 100 days straight walk a certain path, exactly that path, back and forth for a 100 days, I am going to create a very clear pathway that I'm going to find it hard to not do that every day, that thing. But if I will deviate from it even once, and stop taking that track for even 30 days. It takes about 30, 25, 30 days to reform a habit, right? Then I can get off of that track and get onto the track that I want to be on. Remember Paul, the things I don't want to do, those are the things I do, you know, the sin. The things I don't want to do, I do. The things I want to do, change paths, change lanes, I feel drawn back in. It's neurologically, physiologically a challenge for you because you are not only flesh, but spirit. But you're not only spirit, but flesh. You already have a habit formed. And you're thinking about something right now. Lord, help me to change saying that. Help me to stop saying. You look old. Stop saying it. Look in that mirror and say, Do you, look, you look young as ever. God bless you. You're never going to get any younger than right now, buddy. No. No. I'm not lying to myself. I, I'm, I'm, I'm being real that, hey, negativity causes me to drag my feet. But I am made in the likeness and the image of God. I know where I'm heading and how to get there. I have an eternal hope to share with those around me. Will I let the enemy take me down the beaten path, or will I get off that beaten path and get on God's path? Amen? It's time to get off the stinking, thinking paths that we have found ourselves on. Amen? Amen. It's time. It's time to let the, the power of God demolish the strongholds that have happened in our mind. For some of us, it's a sin that you've been doing again and again, and you've said, I'm going to stop, but you haven't yet. This is the moment. Understand, yes, you are at war. But there's winners and losers of war. Will you win? This is eternal. I wouldn't mess with it. It's time to let sin be sin and kick it to the curb. Let the enemy know, my stronghold has nothing to do with you. You're outside of the kingdom of my life. God is my stronghold. I put you in place. I put all my joy, my hope, my peace, my passion is in you and you alone. So name that thing that, that has come against you and demolish it with what? Truth. The truth always will break the bondage of the lie that's been sown into your life by the enemy. I don't know how that got lied into you. But today is the day you start to let the truth heal you. Let the truth be laid on top of that lie. 
and let that anxiety go. Let that negativity go. Let that worldly spirit go and get on with the tasks that God has given me. How about changing it to this? He's given me all the time that I need to do what needs to be done. Because some of us, the lie is, you ain't got enough time. Well, I got enough time to sit there and look at my phone. Was that aimed at me? <laughs> you got enough, personally, right? We've got enough time to do X, Y, and Z. Well, you don't have enough time for me, God says. Yes, you do. He's given me all the time I need to do what needs to be done. How about, he's given me all the strength I need to do what he's called me to do. When I am weak, he is strong. God, you are strong in me. Thank you. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is alive in me. All authority on earth has been given to me. What? We are walking in a millionth of that probably. Amen. Amen. Lord, change my mind. So I change what comes out of this. Please, please, I need peace. I need your strength, your stronghold in me. I need you to win the war in my mind. So as we close, on the back of your boat, Tim, for this thing down, I think so, the final page, top of it, says talk it over. Our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. So where do you think your life is headed? And answer that question. Where's my life headed based on my thoughts? Some of us need to take a break from the news. Is there anything you would like to change about your destination? Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to change destinies. What stronghold is holding you back? That next question, middle. What negative statement do you say about yourself? And how does that affect you? I know how it affects me when I say negative stuff about me. Puts me back on the couch. Can't do it. No. Stop saying the serpent's words for the serpent. If he wants to say those words, kick him in the face. Amen. God gave you a heel and he said, yeah, the serpent will bite your heel, but you will. Hey, what's happening down there, teenagers? We're, we're just crushing some serpents out there. <laughs> Woo! Some of you need to crush some serpents in your life. He's trying to speak into you and tell him, hell is for you, bud, not for me. Enough. I'm done with you. Get out of my head. Sorry, I just went into the woman's thing. All right, and, and finally, what truth demolishes the stronghold that Satan has gotten in my head? How can I replace the negative thoughts with the truth of Scripture? And I got like just one. Let me give you my example personally. One of the things I struggle with, my wife, she's a counselor. She speaks into me on this. Everyone will abandon me. So I don't know, it's one of my fears or something. I don't know what happened to me when I was a kid. My mom's here, maybe she can explain here later. <laughs> maybe it's when they tied me up behind the couch when I was a kid. They, they called CPF, no, they didn't call CPF. Everyone will abandon me. It's one of those feelings that I, I struggle with. And my wife's like, honey, what is the truth that demolishes that lie? I was like, well, God says never will I leave you nor forsake you. That probably takes care of that one. She's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then she's like, let's pray. You know what we're doing a lot more as we've talked about this? We're doing a lot of this. Let's pray. Let me just pray about it. And even last night, I was working about stuff for church and whatnot. Let's pray. So and so came up. <laughs> let's pray. Like, we're not getting anything done, but we're praying a lot, you know? <laughs> so this first week might be just a lot of praying. But let's pray. And, and maybe you're like, hey, it must be nice you have somebody to pray with. Even if you're at home alone, 
Say to yourself right out loud. Let's pray. Jesus, you know what's coming against my mind tonight. I ask you to overthrow that in Jesus' name. And, and maybe for some of you, I, I pray you have a network you feel like you can reach out to. If there's nobody in this room, you're like, man, I can, I can call on them to pray. Please text us. Please call us. Whatever it might be. And let's pray. Five minutes, two minutes, 30 seconds, whatever it takes. Let go of that thing and get the enemy out of your head and run your race. Amen? Amen. It's time. Jesus, thank you for this time of teaching us, helping us to understand more of what your heart is for our, our head and, and, and the beautiful thing that you did when you made such a powerfully intricate mind you put in each one of us. We're all critically thinkers. We're all good at being, we can certainly in the worldly sense see the negative. We can certainly easily follow a path of least uh, resistance and just be sheep to a slaughter. Lord, I pray that you would help us to follow your spirit, to hear your voice, to search for you, to allow you to remove thoughts that the enemy is trying to destroy us with. And I pray that we'd raise to a new level in our in our head to understand that you have good things in store for us. You want to bless our minds with peace and joy. Despite the situation, with power, with authority. Power, love, sound, mind. God, give it to us in full capacity and start the work now. And Lord, if there be anybody in this room right now or somebody watching live who has not received you as Lord and Savior, that's where this starts. That's where the healing begins. And it just goes like this. Pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. I receive you as Lord and Savior. I know you are raised from the dead. And I need you. And when PC and I just looking around this morning real quick, if you prayed that prayer for the first time and say, hey, that's me. I, I, I needed forgiveness. I'm starting there. I just want you to raise your hand so we know to pray for you. I'm not going to have you stand up and do anything else. All right. Lord, be with those who are making decisions for Christ right now. And help us, Lord, the battlefield of this mind. It's such a sensitive thing. It's such an in the moment. And we're moody people, you know. You dealt with the Israelites in the desert. That was moody, central. Lord, I pray that we would be less moody and more driven by your spirit, more filled with joy and your words. And may we be then an instrument to share your words from a sound mind, from a place of love and of power. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.